dir, Dr. Ingrid Gräfin zu Solms Wildenfels, dear members of the Ingrid zu Solms Foundation, and particularly dear Safira Jafari. We are today honoring your engagement for human rights in Afghanistan, and particularly for women's rights. The Global Gender Gap Report annually analyzes nearly 160 countries with regard to gender equality. Afghanistan comes last. Society is shaped by patriarchal norms that are among the most rigid in the world. Girls and women are subject to authority of male members, male family members, restricted by a corset of regulations and deprived of their most elementary rights. Family honor is based on complete control of female family members. In addition, there are the norms of the Sharia, which declare the submission of women to be God's will. Under the rule of the Taliban, which lasted from 1996 to 2001, women were even denied medical care because men were not allowed to treat women and women were not allowed to be doctors. After the Taliban's regime was overthrown, it appeared that a new departure was on the horizon. The government passed laws based on the requirements of the UN Women's Rights Convention and women's rights activists launched initiatives for girls' education and against domestic violence. In this situation, it was possible that women could also hold political offices. One of them is Safira Jafari, the winner of the Ingrid Sazalms Foundation's Human Rights Award for 2020. Safira Jafari is the daughter of an official and a female physicist, and thus belongs to a small Afghan middle class. Her parents are liberal people who let their daughter grow up freely and were not obsessed with finding a husband for her too quickly. Instead, they were education-oriented. Safira Jafari studied in India and had just obtained a master's degree there in 2017 when she became aware of a job advertisement. The post of a mayor in Maidan Shar had become vacant. Safira Jafari was 26 years old when she was appointed mayor of Maidan Shar city. Many Afghans did not agree with this decision. Particularly men tried to prevent her from taking office. When she went to her office on the first day of her term, a mob of angry men armed with sticks stood at the door and denied entry. They threw stones. They would not tolerate a woman in this position. Maidan Shah is conservative. Women do not play a role in the public and they wear the burqa when they leave the house. The Taliban controlled the outskirts. Safira Jafari had to fight for nine months, but finally she prevailed and took office in spring 2019. That this was possible is also thanks to her unusual commitment. She used particular social media and in Afghanistan, her story was considered exceptional for many of the people in the country. Thousands took part in her story. Now she is mayor and she gives instructions to nearly 100 men. But her job is anything but easy. Several attacks have been carried out on her. For this reason, she cannot live in Maidan Shar and has to commute two hours a day from Kabul. 
Safira Jafari does not correspond to the image that conservative Afghans make of a woman. She is a single, which for many is an affront itself. She is educated. She is confident and brave. This is shocking in an environment where submission and obedience are the only desirable feminine qualities. Now we'll come to the work of Safira Jafari in Maidan Shah. What is her program? What did she do as a mayor? One of her goals is the protection of the environment. She campaigned to collect materials such as waste paper and scrap metal in order to recycle them. Another interest is, of course, the empowerment of women. She opened a market for women and planned schools in which girls and boys are taught together. And she founded an organization named Assistance and Promotion of Afghan Women. Safira Jafari's efforts were repeatedly threatened by the precarious political situation in Afghanistan. The Taliban are strong and form shadow governments almost everywhere in the country. The legal government makes concessions that sound absurd. For example, women and girls were recently banned from singing in the public. The female voice is considered haram, forbidden by Islam, because it supposedly seduces men to sin. The situation will not get any better for women in the future. The international troops that provided protection for the many measures implemented to enhance women's rights are withdrawing, and the Taliban are advancing. In an interview, Safira Jafari said what this means for women. All achievements that would have been so laboriously achieved would be abandoned and women would be relegated to the home again. Safira Jafari herself doesn't believe that she could still be mayor, but she could continue to speak out for women's rights, she said, no matter where she would have to live. Today in Frankfurt, Safira Jafari <coughs> receives the Ingrid Sussolms Foundation's Human Rights Prize. We are honoring a woman who, even in a desolate situation, maintains her courage and does all she can to ensure that women's rights will not be forgotten in Afghanistan, neither now nor in the future. Ich verlese die Urkunde, Certificate, the Ingrid Susan Stiftung awards Safira Gafari for her outstanding commitment for women's rights in Afghanistan and serving under very severe circumstances as first woman ever in history as mayor of Maidan Sharif to lead the city with the Ingrid Susan's award of Human Rights 2020. The award is endowed with 5,000 euro. Frankfurt am Main, Germany, 1st July 2021. Congratulations. You will get the certificate, but not now. <laughs> we'll send it to you by email and maybe by airmail as well. All the best to you. Dear Mayor Gafari, my name is Heike Algeyer. I'm 
the head of the Ingrid Susoms Fellowship, which is the network of all of the previous awardees of the foundation, and currently it counts more than 40 also strong women uh, of science, medicine, arts, culture, music, and certainly also women like you who stood up and stand up for human rights, um, and especially for women's rights. Um, it is a great personal pleasure for me to meet you today. Yesterday I saw you speak in the headline news uh, in, uh, in, here in Germany, and I was so deeply impressed by your courage, by your personal strength, and by the power with which you continuously do your job and uh, stand up for everything and do that under the current incredible circumstances which any of us, I think, here can hardly ever imagine. So it's my great honor to welcome you to the Ingrid Sussongs Fellowship as well. And uh, I have the pleasure to also read the certificate um, to you. Um, on the occasion of awarding the Human Rights Award 2020 to Safira Ghaffari, the Ingrid Sussongs Foundation certifies her lifelong membership in the Ingrid Sussongs Fellowship. Frankfurt Main, Germany, July the 1st, 2021, signed by the founder of this foundation, Duchess Ingrid Susoms. Um, and, well, a warm welcome from my side. Please let us know how we can reach you per email or whatever. And uh, alongside with the certificate, we will also try to send you the needles or the pins of the membership of the Solms Fellowship. Let's see how we get it to you, maybe by any kind of non-virtual mail. Again, welcome, warmest congratulations, and all the best for your future. Safira, do you hear me? Yes, please say some words to us. We are very honored to listen. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks to Evil One and my warm regards to all of you. It's pride to be with all of you today, uh, despite the fact that our meeting is virtually, but still I'm happy and very blessed to see all and thank the uh, Angor Zosons Foundation for recognizing me with this award. I'm so proud that after taking office as a first female mayor to my country, Newly, I am serving the families of murderers, victims, and prisoners of war at the Defense Ministry of Afghanistan. And it's just been a third um, week of my job. I'm so happy to see the world recognizing me for my work toward my beloved country, for, what, for the patient that I have, for the, the, the improvements, as well for the uh, proving women's power and ability. My target is proving what we are exactly as women and what we can do. As an Afghan woman who was born in war and is still living in war and never lost her father on 15 November 2020, and the Taliban murdered my dad just in front of our house, I know more better about the values of human rights and the totality of these rights. I see every day the human rights are being violated in my country, and many of country men, men and women are losing their lives. Due to wars, we hope that the world, especially the German government and people and all those organizations that works toward human rights, and especially women rights, will not forget the Afghan people, especially Afghan women. And we hope we could work together to successfully fight this courage of terrorism. Because if we win, as always, the world will be a safer place for other nations, 
and in particular, global tourism requires international efforts. Hopefully, the people of the world will not forget this and not forget us. Once again, I'm really thankful of all the team and jury members and all everyone who recognizes me for my efforts. And I'm really, really blessed meeting you all virtually. Hope I could meet you all personally wherever or whenever I've been, I've been to Germany or uh, I, could, I could make it. Thank you so much once again. Also doch eine Zwischen...